This week we return to some of the readings from the lectionary, so we know that there are Christians all over the world whose thoughts and reflections will be on a similar theme to ours. It makes our gathering even more significant and poignant. Gather us here in the lost and forsaken. Gather us here in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall be wicked. We shall arise at the sound of your name. Gather us in and hold us forever. Gather us in and make us your own. Gather us in, all peoples together, fire of love in our flesh and our bone. Our opening words come from Psalm 68. Sing to God, all powers of the earth, sing praise to the Lord, to him who rides the ancient skies above, who thunders with mighty voice. Proclaim the power of God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose power is in the skies. Today we're contemplating a powerful God who may be invisible at times, but is visible in power in other ways. And so we remember the children's song to help us on our way. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. And we repeat it for good measure. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. The rivers are his, the mountains are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. Holy God, creator of all things, remembering that you are our loving God, who takes delight in the praises of your people, remembering that you are our saving God, who sent his son to die for us, so that we could be restored to the people you created us to be. We worship you and we lift your name up high this morning as we remember all that you are and all that you have done. As we bring you our prayers in words and in the quietness of our hearts, may they bring you delight as you see our characters change by the work of your spirit. As we bring you our songs, May the truths the writers share with us become our own heartfelt aspirations. As we bring you our hearts and minds in contemplation of your word, may our wills be transformed by the renewing work of your spirit. And in our longing to worship you this morning, we realise that we want to give you more than a morning of worship we want to worship you with every aspect of our lives, every moment of our days, every word and action in every relationship. Lord, God, this is the desire of our hearts. And yet we know we are weak to fulfill it, falling at every temptation to live away from you. We say cruel, or unconsidered things that hurt people. We are silent when we should speak with compassion and truth. We act, sometimes with malice, but more often with carelessness for the consequences to others. And there are times when we are simply lazy, hurting people in our selfishness. Lord, these are not lives that honour you as we would hope. So we ask your forgiveness because of your great love for us. And more, we ask for the power of your spirit within us to remake us, inspire us, enable us to worship you every day in every way. To the glory of your son's name, who taught us when we pray together to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's reading is from Acts chapter 17, verses 22 to 31. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walk around and look carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship? And this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. He marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. Amen. Quite a few times in the course of this crisis, people have been pointing out how popular church Facebook pages, websites, online worship services and so on have been becoming, even ours. And apparently one of the most popular searches over the last few months has been around the subject of prayer. Mainstream media have also picked up on the need to enable people of faith to exercise their need to worship by providing regular, if sometimes randomly scheduled, services. It's not really surprising to those of us who are in the, the God business, if you like. Human beings are made to worship, to pray. We forget it sometimes, but actually it's as true for people outside of faith communities as it is for those of us within them. And I meet up with people who know it very clearly as much outside the church as inside. And it's exactly what the Apostle Paul discovers when he arrives in Athens, a city on the wane with a semblance of religiosity, a love of novelty and a community hobby, if you like, of philosophy. This is by no means a soulless place or a godless or a faithless society, but they do not seem to know how to connect with God personally. Most of their gods seem to be pretty remote deifications of human attributes that are actually often quite petty, that mustn't be riled. And just in case there's a risk of missing one of these gods out, they have an altar, Paul discovers, to an unknown god as well. Relationally, morally, powerfully, God seems absent or invisible from the lives of the Athenians even though they're willing to expend considerable energy and creativity in trying to appease any and every god they can conceive. And so Paul determines to make the invisible visible, 
to enable the Athenians to see the God who is behind all things, in all things, alongside us in every part of life. The one from whom we have life and breath and everything else. The one who came among us in Jesus Christ. Today it's equally tricky to spot God, though we have a sense we need to. Prayer is the way to open our eyes to see. It's the way of living that enables us to look at everything every situation and learn to see God at work and get alongside what God is doing. It's the way of living that makes everything we set our hand to become a part of our worship. It's a way of having the unknown, invisible God known and visible both for us and through us for the sake of others. It's an intriguing idea, isn't it? To live in relationship with the Almighty God. No wonder the Athenians told Paul, we want to hear more of this. This idea of living constantly and thoroughly in and for the glory of God is present in an old and familiar hymn. It's one of my favourites. Uh, there's a lot of tunes that you could sing, Take My Life and Let It Be, too. But um, I actually am going to read it this morning because one of the things I find funny about this hymn is is where all of the um, the stand the, the the versions of it pause it at the end of take my life and let it be that's how it is when it's written in a hymn stanza um, that's where the pause is take my life and let it be that almost sounds like you, you don't want God to have anything to do with your life so I'm going to read it letting the the sentence structure um, take our minds maybe in a slightly different way Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne. Take my love. My Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself, and I will be ever only all for thee. Ever loving God, in the long years since the world has seen you, we come together in prayer in the hope and assurance of your commitment to us and the life of this world. We pray for ourselves, that we might be filled with your Holy Spirit, that we will be agents for peace. In a world where destruction seems insurmountable, that we will be confident in your commandment to go forth in love for you and each other. We pray for our church as it continues to change, to evolve, to seek out the best way to follow you that it will be a conduit for your promise to the world, that it will work for your purpose, not its own concerns of bricks and mortar, arbitrary numbers or the dreams of past glories. We pray for all those on the margins of our societies, our communities and our interests. We pray for those who are cast aside by a world obsessed by monetary wealth, the eternal goal of so-called growth, while those with the most continue to gain and those with the least continue to lose. We pray for our world, torn apart by fighting, by greed, by disregard for the environment. In particular, 
We pray for all your children who have been ravaged by the sin of war, for families destroyed, lives lost, dreams shattered and liberty denied, for all those orphaned by this evil, that they will know your love, and through your people, peace might become a reality. In your love, in your spirit, in your life, we pray these things. Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, all you his people. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Let us praise, let us thank, let us celebrate and dance. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with us all now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>